Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. It's the 26th of August, Friday, here in Washington, D.C., and the world, the world strategic crisis is deteriorating rapidly. Big danger is a possible Turkish attack on Syria, which would envelop the entire eastern Mediterranean and parts of Southwest Asia in a, a war. Uh, this is uh, very grave. We've also got to add in that uh, we were told this week that Pakistan has come very close to expelling the entire U.S. embassy, this entire overgrown, bloated apparatus, which is chock full of terrorist controllers, provocateurs, people who some of them have been exposed in the past. Uh, we were on the verge of having them completely expelled, PNG, persona non grata for all of them. Uh, and the uh, U.S. ambassador had to hurry back and try to uh, calm the waters. Uh, that's another uh, thing which is appro approaching the point of explosion. So watch out, Turkey. Don't listen to the British. Don't listen to the U.S., the State Department, and so forth. The attack on Syria is not a path to greatness. Erdogan, you will not be the caliph of the Middle East or the viceroy of the Middle East under U.S. auspices. Uh, your alliance with the Muslim Brotherhood is um, reckless and uh, irresponsible. It is an act of incalculable folly. Uh, you need to look back to Ataturk, who uh, would have told you that empire doesn't work. Empire is bad for Turks. The Ottoman Empire was bad for Turks, bad for others. Empires do not work. This is also important. Now, we're just today, the fourth anniversary of the Kenny Bunkport warning. Look at it on tarpley.net. Four years ago today, I issued the Kenny Bunkport warning with the help of Bruce Marshall and some others. This was signed by certain peace leaders. At least uh, they signed it. Uh, some of them then, then uh, got cold feet and tried to go back on that. But by that time, the, the message was out. Uh, I'll try to describe this just briefly. Uh, this was, uh, it's relevant now. The Kenny Bunkport warning was uh, written on the afternoon of August 24th, 2007. Cheney is preparing a false flag event to cover an attack on Iran. It will either be a false flag terror event or a new Gulf of Tonkin event. This was uh, signed by certain peace leaders 24th, 25th of August at Kenny Bunkport, Maine. It was sent out as an email on the 26th of August. It was then posted on rents.com on the 26th of August. So it was up the entire day of the 27th of August. On the 28th of August, Bush gave a very bellicose speech to the American Legion in Kansas City. On the 29th, a rogue B-52 was loaded with six nuclear-armed cruise missiles at Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota. On the 30th of August, the day after, the B-52 was flown from Minot to Barksdale, outside of the command and control of the United States. The plane, with its six nuclear missiles, had been hijacked by the rogue network. This was a terror event in the making. On, uh, however, by the time it got to Barksdale, it was stopped. There was a pushback or rebellion against this uh, action, and it was prevented from flying onto the Middle East, where it was headed. Now, by that time, within that time frame, the Kenny Bunkport warning was displayed on 110,000 websites around the world. On September 5th, the entire Rogue V-52 story became public through the Army Times, the Air Force Times, Agence France Press, and others. On September 6th, Israel attacked Syria, allegedly a nuclear reactor, I don't, I don't believe it was a nuclear reactor. If it was a nuclear reactor, where's the nuclear cloud that would have led to vociferous protests by the part of all sorts of countries in the path of the cloud? Later on in uh, September, there was a stand-down of the entire United States Air Force. Every plane was grounded for one full day to do an inventory. Where are our nukes and who's controlling them? It was then followed by purges, purge of the Secretary of the Air Force, purge of the head of the uh, 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 Air Force Chief of Staff, the Joint Chief from the Air Force. This it was all carried out. There was never a con congressional investigation. Dennis Kucinich at Santa Fe in the month of October of that year promised an investigation of the rogue B-52. It was never done. I believe that uh, the Kenny Bunkport warning on 110,000 websites had some role of some kind in stiffening the resolve of people. Uh, this had been preceded on the 21st of July by an essay by me, Cheney determined to strike in USA, only impeachment or a general strike 
can stop him. That was posted on the 21st of July. It was published in the Rock Creek Free Press and was sitting in uh, boxes in the D.C. subway all during these events. Why is this relevant today? Well, partly because we're here again. The Syrian card, the Syrian war, is once again on the horizon. But we've also got Dick Cheney telling us about this. Dick Cheney has now confirmed once again the tremendous importance of the Kenny Bunkport warning. We're talking about Dick Cheney's new uh, autobiography. It's not yet out as a book, but the London Independent and other uh, press sources have got pieces of Dick Cheney, uh, his commentary on these events. In my time, this is Cheney's Mein Kampf, uh, he says, in June 2007, June 2007, just before some of these events, Cheney, at a meeting in the White House, urged Bush to bomb Syria. He wanted to bomb Syria in June of 2007. There was no consensus in the meeting. It was not done. But guess what? Cheney went ahead and tried to do it anyway. Now, of course, when I say Cheney, I don't mean Cheney. I mean the group for which he is a spokesperson. He's not the head of it. He's just the flack. He's the, the public face of the invisible government, the rogue network, the parallel government. And this is what, uh, what was done then. He, he couldn't get it through the White House in June 2007, but by the end of August of 2007, he had, his group, had successfully hijacked a B-52 with six nuclear-armed cruise missiles. It was on its way to the Middle East on the eve of the Israeli attack on Syria. This is a, this is a rogue B-52 that would have joined in an attack on Syria, and maybe Hezbollah, and maybe Iran, nobody knows, but certainly Syria was very much in the crosshairs. So I think that's a pretty good record. In June 2007, we're told, Cheney demands an attack on Syria. And by mid-July, I am putting out the analysis, Cheney determined to strike in U.S., because, of course, he needs a false flag event or a Gulf of Tonkin event to justify why are you attacking Syria. The Kenny Bunkport warning is confirmed in spades with a vengeance. And uh, one of the problems of the 9-11 truth movement, one of the reasons it has largely collapsed, was its inability to recognize the validity of this and to embrace it and to go with it and carry it all the way. Uh, instead of, uh, of vilifying me, which was done then by various assets of the Ford Foundation, uh, co-thinkers of the Ford Foundation like Chip Burlett at that time, uh, they, the 9-11 Truth Movement should have been pressing for an immediate investigation of the rogue B-52 because that was then going to be the new 9-11. They failed, and they paid the price of their failure, and we've all paid the price of that failure. So maybe it's not too late for people to wise up, get smart, and realize what was at stake in all of that. Now let's lift and shift and go to Libya in the next section here on World Crisis Radio, Topley.net, and Webster G. Topley Twitter feed in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> 